Okay, so uh, welcome everyone to this week's Applied and Computational Math Seminar. Uh, it is my privilege to introduce my postdoc mentor, Angela Mihai, who has been a lecturer and uh, now is a reader in Applied Mathematics in our department. And uh, Angela did her PhD at Durham. This was then followed by a spell of postdoc, including at Strathclyde, where I did my undergrad studies as well. Uh, and at Oxford and Cambridge as well. Yeah, and Angela today will be talking about mathematics and mechanics of liquid crystal elastomers. And uh, I'll move the laptop so that people on Zoom can see Angela and it's over to Angela now, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, indeed, thank you for organizing all of these, these seminars before uh, this year on online, but now also, blend a blend in person and and online so great job thank you so much for doing it also i thought i would offer myself to give a talk when when my text said that he had a, a free slot because it's nice to hear how the the uh, new uh, people who arrived this this autumn are getting on with the, their work and to they introduced uh, that to us in some way, but I think it would be useful for, to them also to know what people who are already here are working on. And um, um, yeah, it's, it's something that uh, I, would, uh, I would like to, to, to present something that I, this is my latest uh, research interest. I tend to, to change research interest quite often. Uh, people who know me uh, probably notice that. Uh, but this is the, the latest one and um, is an interest in liquid crystal elastomers. I'll, I'll explain in a moment uh, what, uh, uh, what they are. Uh, these are my collaborators with whom I worked uh, pretty much online um, most of the time. Uh, some of the work has started in person uh, before, before we, we went uh, to, to work from home, but uh, most of the work has been carried out online, um, the work that I'm going to show you today. Okay, so uh, we we are all familiar with um, uh, with the, the two um, classical state of matter, namely the uh, crystalline solid and and the liquid. Um, in the crystalline solid, you have a, a perfect order. In liquid, you you have no no order at all. It, it the molecules are perfectly disordered. But there is another state of matter in between, namely the liquid crystals. They have they were discovered. Uh, towards the end of the 19th century when it was observed that cholesterol did not melt um, like other, other material were, were, were melting. Namely, it was noted that they had two melting temperature. It, it was um, first melted from a solid state to come kind of uh, not, not exactly a, a fluid state. And then it was melted further to, to a perfectly, perfect fluid. So what was that state in the middle? Um, that was the, the liquid crystal, and indeed now uh, the type of liquid crystal that are found in that kind of cholesterol are the uh, cholesteric liquid crystals. Uh, that was uh, so. That was interesting, but nothing happened for for a while. They, they were not synthesized in in um, uh, artificially uh, at all until the beginning of the 19th century, when the first liquid crystal were were um, uh, manufactured. But again, it was treated as a curiosity, not something that people uh, would, would uh, study, also because they are very, very difficult to synthesize. So it, it wasn't something that people uh, will be able to obtain at a, at a large scale, scale or study or uh, communicate about that easily. So it, it, it took about 80 years until um, liquid crystal were, became something that people could actually study systematically and synthesize a bit more and uh, produce a theory and so on. Uh, so that's the liquid crystals. Uh, now, what I'm going to, to, uh, to tell you about is the liquid crystal elastomers. So what are that, these? So liquid crystal elastomers are cross-linked networks of polymeric chains containing liquid crystal messages, me meaning they're actually rubber polymers combined with liquid crystal messogens. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a new material which was um, foreseen by Degen in 1975, but it was only synthesized um, later in 1980s. Um, and this material has the 
the great property that is highly responsive to uh, do it to environmental changes such as uh, changes of temperature, changes of light, uh, electric magnetic field, uh, much more than uh, rubber would be. So here you, you've got, you, 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 it's shown a phase transition. So this is the isotropic, perfectly disordered state where messages are perfectly disordered. Now when the material is cooled, the a order, a pneumatic order is obtained. And here you see an end, this will give you the, the, the pneumatic director. So this gives you the average orientation of the liquid crystal. It's not a perfect orientation. It's an average of orientation of the liquid crystal mesogen. It, the process is reversible, it's perfectly reversible. So at, on heating, it becomes um, uh, an isotropic material as well, again. So uh, you, you see here, uh, people know about rubber that its elasticity is reversible more or less. Um, we, we, we neglect the little uh, kind of viscoelasticity phenomenon that might appear there, but it's, it's largely known as a, as a, as a good uh, elastic material with reversible deformations. Now combining that with a reaction, with reversible reaction to, uh, to temperature, such as uh, in this example, uh, makes, it, uh, makes it a very desirable material for, for various applications. Well, yeah, this is the uh, cover image that we, we, we had published. So, because this is a, a molecular dynamic simulation of the liquid crystal that my, my collaborator, Haoran Wang, actually produced. And yeah, uh, the Royal Society liked it and they put it on the cover. So, it is, it is a nice material to even to look at. Now, talking about uh, thermotropic, um, thermotropic uh, systems, th these are the easiest to, to, to study and to visualize. So what you see here is the is a strip of liquid crystal elastomer. This is in the reference state. Then it is heated. When it is heated, uh, the material, remember on heating, it becomes disordered, so it shrinks. And on cooling, it becomes order, ordered again, and uh, it, it elongates. But this difference is visible. So it's not something that you need a, uh, uh, you need a microscope to notice. Uh, it's, it's visible uh, uh, very, very well. However, this is not a phenomenon that's only particular to liquid crystal elastomer. It is in fact a phenomenon that is, is inherited from, from rubber elasticity, but it is enhanced by the, by the liquid crystal mesogens. Yeah, in, in rubber elasticity is known as the Go-Joule effect, uh, which is exactly what, what he says, the tendency of, of this of stretched elastomer to contract when heating. In other words, um, they, they will be heating. They, they will, if, when they're stretched, they will release some heat. And this is what these children are trying to notice here, where they're, they've got some rubber band, they're trying to notice that the rubber band becomes slightly warmer when they, uh, uh, yeah, they're probably more sensitive. That It's not easy to notice that um, uh, with, with um, yeah, just normal day-to-day -day activities. But liquid crystal elastomers do more than just rubber does. So yeah, that will be a, that will be a very good example of how rubber um, responses are being enhanced uh, by the liquid crystal mastogen. But there are also new phenomena which uh, were observed in some liquid crystal elastomers. And one such phenomenon is this one. So we have a liquid crystal at the top there, uh, liquid crystal elastomer. It's transparent because the mesogen is perfectly aligned. So when in an aromatic liquid crystal uh, elastomer, when the mesogen is uh, are perfectly aligned, the material is transparent. Okay, and then it is stretched a bit and it becomes opaque. Okay, then you stretch it further and it becomes transparent again. So obviously this tells you that there is again order. But what happens in the, in the, in the, in the middle uh, is that the material actually uh, develops some kind of uh, pattern, it's the shear patterns that alternate. So there will be, uh, if you like, so in, in, each, in, each, uh, in each strip of, uh, of I have a, yeah, so in each, in each strip of, mater uh, of the material, the pneumatic will align in a certain way. And then in the next strip, it will align in the opposite way and so on. So this, these phases will alternate. And this is, this is what happens here. So it's a, it's a shear striping pattern 
that develop spontaneously on stretching, well, depends on the material, depends on the manufacturing uh, technique, the number of strips will vary. So uh, that number of strips is uh, dependent on the material, but they will always appear there. And uh, what you, the plot here shows you the stress. So the stress also, so when you, uh, when you uh, initially stretch the material, there, there is a bit of stress, but during this uh, period when the shear strapping forms, there is no stress. So it's stress zero. Okay, or almost, almost zero. So the stress is, is um, this is why it's also called this uh, uh, softening phenomenon. So there is a, there is a um, specific, specific pattern that forms only a liquid crystal elastomer. That's not only uh, curiosity, other type of elastomer, not the same type of elastomer, different type of uh, liquid crystal elastomer have a different behavior. Namely, when they're stretched, like uh, one would expect in, in simple tension, it was observed that the thickness, so the, the thickness of the, of, the, uh, of the material, at some point, so it, yeah, it decreases as it should be for a while, but then suddenly it becomes stationary and then it tends to increase a little bit. So it's a kind of oxyticity that's observed here because in, in oxytic, oxytic uh, materials, what happens, you, you stretch them and they become wider instead of becoming narrower in the orthogonal direction. It's the same here. So this material, you see it's transparent. So it's perfectly ordered. It's perfectly ordered to begin with. Uh, so what happens again is that the, the, the thickness of the material tends to, 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 to increase a little bit. And this, this was compared um, in, in some, some um, uh, uh, articles with the cat skin. And indeed, uh, so I've, I've found this, this paper on cat skin is the only skin type that um, has this oxyticity property. If you, if you stretch it for a while, the, the thickness of, the, of cat skin tends to, to increase. So it's, it's something to, to, uh, to think about. But yeah, so it's um, it's something that only in cat skin has been noticed. How many ways do they look hmm? Sorry? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay. So what, um, uh, what can you do to model these materials? Well, modeling is actually not, not to to problematic because we are talking about combining two materials that have been very, very well studied. So we combine rubber with liquid crystals. There is a theory for each of them that's well established uh, and uh, well, well developed. So uh, what we, we have, we, it's, it's these materials and we, we start with models uh, that uh, from, from rubber, and we, then we augment them with uh, energy functions from liquid crystals and see what we get. So this is, this is what a general model might look like. So it's just a, a, a sketch of a model. I'm, I'm, I'm not going in any great detail at this stage. So it, uh, it's an elastic component and it's a liquid crystal component or pneumatic component. The elastic component will depend on the deformation gradient F will also depend on the pneumatic director and as you expect, and will also depend on the uh, traceless order parameter tensor, which that, that comes from the liquid crystal uh, theory. Uh, the strain energy for liquid crystal, we, we write it here in the, uh, in the Lando de Gen expansion. Um, and yeah, it depends on the, on the uh, order parameter tensor. So that's a general framework. The uh, first model that was created for uh, liquid crystal elastomers actually did not contain the liquid crystal component, only the elastic component, and it's based on the Neohookian. So practically it's just a modification on Neohookian material by taking into consideration the pneumatic, the pneumatic component and one can, can have that kind of uh, uh, of basic model for liquid crystal elastomers. Uh, 
but uh, generally for large deformations and for uh, phenomena like I, I described earlier with shear striping and the oxyticity, one needs a bit more sophistication to in order to capture those um, those responses. Is there anything why it should be looking at a position? That, that's the easiest way to write it. Otherwise, it can be quite uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Um, right, so this is, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm just uh, uh, placing this uh, plot here. I'm not going to, to describe very much what we did here, but the idea is that what we are trying to do in some of the models, if we have data, we try in the first instance, we try to calibrate a model to the data and then uh, see if we can make any predictions. But yeah, here is actually uh, a model that uh, was obtained for based on some data where it was observed that actually the perfect re reversibility is more it depends on very much on the on the temperature at the high temperature you you see the deformation is more reversible than it is at lower temperature for example that uh, that can be captured i'm just giving you some another example of um, how this material does its behavior does depend on the temperature very much but generally what we try to do, we try to deform the material in various ways and then uh, uh, see how, what the responses are and then try to obtain a model that captures those responses. Again, this is from a paper where we um, combined uh, deformations such as stretching and shearing and then obtain a model that will, will capture all of these, uh, these responses. The one, the, the one particular, um, model that I'm, I'm going to, to discuss in a bit more details though, is this one uh, regarding oxyticity because this is the most recent. So again, what happens is we have a, a, a material, okay, the pneumatic director in the reference configuration, it's that little n zero there is uh, perpendicular to the, to the uh, tensile force. So we stretch it and uh, the response is as we expect in rubber, namely the material becomes narrower um, with stretch, but then we stretch it some more and it doesn't, it stops narrowing. And after a while it even becomes thicker. Okay, so that's the phenomenon that I'm, I'm interested in, in capturing here. So this is the description of the pneumatic elastomer. So the, the pneumatic director, the pneumatic director is oriented like that to begin with in the reference configuration, then it rotates. And um, we have these uh, order, para order uh, parameter scalars here. So that uh, will appear in the uh, order parameter tensor, which I will describe a bit later. But uh, the two parameters, the two scalars are Q and B, one for uniaxial order and the other one for uh, biaxial order. And this is a schematic on how these uh, angles appear, beta and alpha. Um, regarding so this is the pneumatic director and this is the orientation of the mesogen um, uh, molecules and uh, so one calculate uh, measures that actually um, experimentally and um, then produces some data and here are the data that um, that we have so the first there on the top left is q so is the scalar order uh, uh, parameter that I showed you uh, on a previous slide. So what you, what, uh, so the initially the director say it's oriented vertically and then it remains vertical. The director does not change, but the order parameter changes. So it, it's Q decreases. Q equal to one corresponds to a perfect order. Q equal zero corresponds to isotropic disorder. So uh, what, although the pneumatic director still remains oriented as it was in reference configuration, the order parameter decreases. And then almost instantaneously, the director flips to it and orients parallel to the, to the applied force. And in this case, the order parameter begins to increase. So again, will become more and more ordered. Also, it was observed that there is some biaxiality appearing. So uh, the biaxial, it's a negative uh, value there for B. This is why it's actually increasing in magnitude as, it, as the deformation progresses, increases in magnitude and then 
decreases again. So that's uh, biaxiality was also uh, measured. And this is the thickness that we are talking about. So uh, it decreases to begin with, then stops decreasing, and then uh, starts to even increase. And this is the applied applied stress. So it's uh, you you can see this rubbery kind of S shape that people who study rubber are quite familiar with. This S shape for rubber tells us that Neohukian is not going to capture it, not even Muni Rivlin is going to capture it. So we will attempt um, Ogden like model. But, so that, but that's only for the elastic rubbery kind of S shape uh, plot. We also need to use the information we have about the order uh, of the leaky crystal mesogen and uh, also this, this uh, oxytic um, uh, response. Ah, okay, temperature is constant. So there is no change in temperature. Yeah, it's room temperature, no changes in temperature. Good question. Yes. So it, it's, uh, it, it kind of, uh, yeah. So we, we uh, proceed to build, to build the, the model. So we have, uh, so I showed you in that sketch of a model, you have the elastic component and the liquid crystal component. So the elastic component in its turn contains two, um, uh, two sub functions, component functions. So W1 and W2. W1 will only depend, so it's, they're both of them type, but W1 will depend on the eigenvalues of the uh, right Cauchy tensor where F is the deformation gradient from the reference configuration. And we take the, as reference configuration, the cross linking state here. Okay. Uh, also uh, incompressibility was observed. So the material, this, this uh, deformation occurs with like oxytic type, but in fact, the material remains incompressible. So the lambda one, lambda two, lambda two remain, uh, the product will remain equal to one. And we also have another one, the W2, which will depend on the now, these are the eigenvalues of the uh, 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 another Cauchy green type tensor, A transpose A, where A has this specific form. So it's G minus one FG zero, where G and G zero are, are asso tensor associated with the natural deformation, meaning the deformation only due to the pneumatic uh, director. Uh, incompressibility is also satisfied throughout because both G and G0 satisfy incompressibility. But this is what they look like. So G0 uh, is, um, it's a, it depends on uh, Q0 or Q0 is the, uh, or the parameter tensor in the reference configuration. And G depends on Q where Q is the, or the parameter tensor in the current configuration. There is I is the identity tensor. C is just a constant, which is an effective step length uh, of the polymeric chain. We don't need uh, to worry about it because uh, in our deformation, because we only practically everything remains uh, uh, diagonal due to this orientation of the, of the director because the director changes from initial orientation to immediately the orthogonal direction. We don't take any shearing into account. So practically G minus one, and, uh, and G0 here will lead to C canceling each other. So we don't need to worry about what C uh, value is. Right, now uh, describing this, this, uh, this uh, order parameter tensor, what do they look like? So in the, in the um, reference configuration, it's uniaxiality. Uh, and uh, because the director, you, you remember N0 was uh, 0, 1, 0. So uh, on, the, on the second position along the diagonal is Q0 and then and, and the uh, complementary uh, components uh, on position one and three so that the, the tensor is traceless. Now for the current configuration, while the director remains still in the original position, which we call to be uh, angle pi over two with respect to the applied force, Q, if you, if you ignore B, if you ignore B, it will look like Q0. Obviously, Q0 is Q at, at, uh, at lambda equal to one. So it's when the deformation begins. But as the deformation progresses, Q takes this uh, uh, form where 
baxiality, uh, where baxiality is, uh, uh, is taken into account. Okay, for theta equals zero, so after the director flips and is now aligned along the uh, applied force, uh, we change uh, the positions where Q appears, but still it remains traceless. Okay, so I already mentioned that, but I wrote it here that Q equal to one corresponds to perfect nematic order, Q equal zero to disorder, random orientation, random orientation, and B equal zero obviously corresponds to the case when we have uh, uniaxiality. So we have all the components in principle now. Um, we can assemble now alpha one square alpha two square alpha three square in the three cases. Remember alpha, alphas were the eigenvalues of A transpose A and A were G minus one F G zero. So we can now write alpha one square alpha two square alpha three square in terms of the lambdas and also in terms of the components of the order parameter tensor for the two situations when the pneumatic director in the first phase remains uh, as in deference configuration and in the second phase when it flips uh, and is aligned with the, with the applied force. Okay, now some assumptions that are needed for theoretical reason, but also uh, they, they, uh, they, they will, they will be, um, they, they, they do make sense in terms of, uh, of the general uh, uh, framework here. So the uh, derivative of the, of the strain energy with respect to all the parameters tensor is zero and also with the pneumatic director. The, actually in the fact that it's, I didn't include this here, but the fact that the derivative of the pneumatic of the strange function with respect to the pneumatic director is zero actually uh, means that the skew symmetric part of the uh, of the Cauchy stress or is zero because we don't have for us the Cauchy stress is diagonal here we, it's automatically satisfied so practically that one is is placed there for for theoreticalism but in our case it's just automatically satisfied. Uh, the second one in, uh, is is imposed, but it will uh, it will actually be uh, it will play a role in uh, uh, in the calculation. The uh, how we, ca we calculate stresses. So the Cauchy uh, stress, it's the usual form of the derivative of W with respect to the deformation gradient multiplied by uh, the transpose of the deformation gradient because we we. We are in an incompressible um, situation. We also have the Lagrange multiplier P associated with in incompressibility. And then the first Biola Kirchhoff stress is just obtained from the Cauchy stress multiplied by um, the minus uh, transpose of the deformation gradient. So general form uh, shouldn't be too, um, this is new, this is not new to people who are familiar with the theory of um, rubber elasticity. Okay, so now we assemble the um, we are, we can assemble the the full the full model when we also bring into play uh, the um, liquid crystal component. So of, uh, you you notice here so C one and C two so we have two terms Ogden type terms for the W one part of the function we have one Ogden time Ogden type term for the W2 function, and this is the uh, Landau de Gen expansion for the liquid crystal for the pneumatic uh, component. Okay, so it's there are a lot of terms there. Uh, what we need to determine from calibration, we need to determine the, the parameters of these of these functions. So the parameters are C1, P1, C2, P2, with the index one there for the first function and C1, P1 for the second function. That's why it's got the upper, upper index there too. Okay, so we've got two, four, six uh, parameters here. And we also have to need to determine the coefficients A, B, and C for the pneumatic component. Uh, one can attempt to, to have a, a simpler version like not including the liquid crystal, for example, one can just, uh, uh, 
attempt to, to do that, but yeah, so the idea is to get a, a better approximation, obviously obtain a better approximation with the data available because we need to incorporate all these data in, in all these ingredients when we, when we obtain the model. So we do that and we, we get a, a calibration and we get these, these uh, values for the parameters. Uh, and one can also, again, borrow from the, from the rubber elasticity theory and calculate directly from the model, the uh, shear uh, modulus at small strain, which is that just the sum of this C11, C21 and C12, the Young's modulus at small strain is three times that. So one can immediately obtain that from the, theory, from the uh, rubber elasticity theory. Obviously you see, because uh, the liquid crystal part of the, uh, of the model, the lambda Dijon expansion does not depend on, on, the, on, a lamb, on the lambdas. It's not, going to, it's not going to be involved in the determination of the stresses. Where, where this is actually appearing in the calibration is where we impose the, del, uh, the, the derivative of W by dQ is, is, is going to be zero. Okay, so I'm just trying, so this is the, the model. So where, how do you calibrate this? Obviously we calibrate, we have information about the applied stress, but the stress um, will not involve the A, B and C uh, terms. However, the constraint that DW by DQ is zero will involve the, those terms. So that's where they, they become uh, um, associated with the model with the, in the calibration. Okay. And this is what we obtain. So this is the Cauchy stress. This is the shear modulus uh, calculated as the Cauchy stress divided by the logarithmic strain. And this is the approximation we get. Okay, so it seems to capture the, the, the right curve, the S type curve for the stress and the correct shape for the, for the shear modulus. Obviously, one which is well, what they what one would like ideally here um, will be to be able to uh, predict oxyticity. So, what happens if somebody is just giving me this model with the parameter values from the table? The question is, will I be able to obtain to to observe the, uh, 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 the oxid, oxytic response in, in terms of lambda three and uh, I, at this stage, I can only see, say that yes, in principle, the truth is the system is very nonlinear. So what you, what the conditions you solve the problem from are that T1 is equal to T. So the um, Cauchy stress in the direction of applied uh, force is known. Yeah, you control that. Then you've got that T2 and T3 must be equal to zero because they're stress-free otherwise, okay? Uh, so you've got enough information about the stresses, and then you have this, the DW uh, by DQ is zero, and also DW by D little b is zero. Okay, so <laughs> this is a very nonlinear system, especially with the function that we have. But in principle, one should be able to, because it, it was made from, from an oxidative material, one should be able to, to obtain oxygen behavior. At, at the moment, we are still thinking to, to simplify this. What's the, what's the actual simplest form of a function that can, and I, I do have a uh, temporary answer to that, but I need to, to work a bit more on it. What's the simplest function that actually can predict oxygen? It will be a function that will obviously um, exhibit this kind of, of deformation as an instability. So the, the normal, uh, deformation where you stretch and the material uh, narrows in other direction will still be a possibility from that material, but also the other version is also possible. So this is this is why I I, I classified it under insta, the instabilities because this is uh, uh, this kind of deformation does not last very long. So it's an, it's an uns, it's unstable, but still it's observed. So it's still um, it's still possible, and if it's possible, then it can be probably. Uh, utilized in some 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 way in, in application, uh, especially because ma molecular oxytic materials have not been uh, uh, known before. So people, when they they produce oxytic material, they produce them from structural uh, architecture. So they have that kind of hinge 
uh, structure where you stretch a material and then like in umbrellas, you, they become wider. But this is material which exhibits toxicity at molecular level. This is, this is very new and it's fascinating, but needs a, needs a bit more work. Okay, this is not the only uh, thing that we, we studied. Obviously, we, we also studied, but I'm not going to, to go into detail with this one because uh, it will be another full talk. Um, we also studied the uh, softening and uh, shear striping uh, instability. So again, one needs a function uh, which uh, for, for this, for this uh, type of uh, instability, we did not need the liquid crystal part of the, of the of the strange function, we only used the elastic, but again, it had W1 and W2 uh, in some form. And um, what we have here, we have the, the uh, plotting the, uh, the, the functions. So there is a minimum, originally the minimum is attained when the pneumatic elastomer remains uh, as it was, uh, perpendicular to the applied force. In the end, the minimum is attained when the pneumatic director has fully aligned with the force, but in the middle, the minimum is attained for this shear striping, alternating shear striping pattern. And there, is, there are various ways in which uh, the uh, coefficients of the, the parameters of the function can be chosen in order to have this uh, response for a longer or for shorter period of, of of, uh, in the deformation, so uh, it's important. But uh, if you also uh, look at the, the shape of these curves, uh, you can see that um, if, if you think of the, um, uh, of, of the stress that it is involved, so the stress is very small in the, where, where, uh, where she's strapping up here. And here is, um, uh, description so it's 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 plotting the rotation of the director the angle of rotation theta zero and here is the shear uh, the shear component that uh, um, that is is being calculated so there is no shear to begin with yeah the the, ang the angle remi remains zero with respect to the original configuration but then when shear strapping form there is shearing one way and also the other way so a two way shearing until it stops and then there's no shearing again and here the angle becomes yes so the angle is uh, rotating in one way and also the other way uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise until it becomes pi over two in for, for both uh, alternating uh, shear, shear stripes uh, the um, Clouds that appear here from from taking the model parameters as stochastic, so that's that's why you have, um, yeah, it's it's very uh, it's very well determined when there is no uh, shear shear striping, but uh, then the variance increases very much when when shear striping up here. Right, uh, we study more i mean you, you've got a material that looks like rubber you tend to to want to see how it compares to rubber it is important to see how far it goes from 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 uh, mimicking the the rubber responses so we did we did various uh, uh, tests by trying to to look at the typical instabilities that one would observe in in uh, in the rubber and see how those instabilities translate when you study them for liquid crystal elastomers. So we did the necking. So what's necking? And you, you stretch a material and then uh, at some point you can stretch without much effort. You can stretch it a lot without a lot of, without uh, make any, any effort. And so this is necking and it is observed uh, in, uh, in, in liquid crystal elastomers. If you have the right, uh, the, the uh, corresponding strategy function also, uh, we, we, we studied the uh, cavitation instability. Uh, similar uh, theory with, um, uh, with, with dust of rubber and also the uh, shell inflation. When you inflate a, a, a rubber shell or a liquid crystal elastomer shell, and uh, at some point uh, you need to uh, apply less 
pressure in order to, to inflate it further. But all of these, okay, so it's a, okay, what's, what's, the, what's so interesting here? Well, in, in the interesting fact is that after, in order to get to uh, straightforwardly compare the theories between the two, you actually need all these, the, the, you need the correct way of expressing the stresses in the liquid crystal elastomer from the stresses of the, uh, of the uh, rubber, uh, rubber network. It's, if you were to do this analysis from scratch with everything for the liquid crystal elastomer strain energy function, it would be a very difficult type of calculation. But if you correctly incorporate the, the theory, the, the rubber theory into, into the model and the, the way uh, the derivation uh, is, is produced, this can be done very quickly. So it's a, it's a hard way of doing it and there's an easy way of doing it. So we, I, we, we had a sort of easy way of doing it in, in the paper. So it's, um, we, we treated them together because it was the same framework and it's, it's valuable if you have a framework that can treat all these instabilities in a very similar way. Um, okay, so uh, then uh, the, there are other type of instabilities that one can study again from from rubber is the, the wrinkling. So we did, we did that as well by having layers, a rubber, a, a liquid crystal elastomer on top of rubber and vice versa, rubber on top of liquid crystal elastomers. And the theory again is, is uh, uh, from, um, from rubber like wrinkling instability is extended uh, quite naturally in this case, carefully, but yeah, it can be done. But obviously when one deals with very, with very thin structures, um, it's more interesting to produce um, reduced models such as plate models. So yes, we do. We, do, we have also a plate model that is uh, uh, produced for liquid crystal elastomers. And again, more recent, um, besides Bisumichi, it's not yet published, is um, model reduction to road. So, but this is for a phototropic uh, a liquid crystal elastomer road. And uh, this mix, mimics very well some experiments, although we did not do validation with experiments, we did qualitatively uh, obtain um, from the theory results similar to the ones observed experimentally. So you, you have the uh, liquid crystal elastomer rod that is being uh, illuminated and then it bends towards the light. And this is what we try to reproduce in our, in our, um, in our um, liquid crystal elastomer rod as well. So this is just a, a kind of, a bird eye view of of the work that uh, that I've been doing in this in this way, but there are yeah, there's more to come. Oh, thank you. And I also want to draw your attention to uh, Newton Institute program that uh, we are organizing. Um, I organized together with Langolieri and Johan Gemino from Duke University uh, in uh, the summer of 2023. So I hope you will. You might, you might want to join, but I'll, I'll give more details when it, it, we are still at the early stages of organization. So I'll, I'll probably circulate more information as the organization progress. Thank you. Yeah, no, so the typical, uh, the typical liquid crystal elastomer have temperature dependence. So you, you can, uh, you, you have, uh, that's the default, default response to be, for, to be thermotropic. If you want to be phototropic, you have to add some, okay, there are some dye molecules which are incorporated into the material and those dye molecules will help with the phototropic response. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah. So it, it's practically all those G and G0, those are, either, that's where the information is. Yes, that's the natural, this is why I call natural deformation tensors because they're associated practically with the thermotropic or phototropic. If you have phototropic, it also appear there, but that's the natural response. You don't apply force to that, it's, it's stress-free. Hmm. Okay. This is validated by the fact that like, if the parameters 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I know where you're going with this. So you say, why will there be a, another coupling between the two? Like yeah. Some yeah. Of yeah. Uh, no, 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 they, they do prefer the simpler form because the model can tend to, to become very complicated. So it's, it's generally it's neglected. Fine. It's fine as long as it, if you fit the parameters. Yeah, it's, it's, it captures the behavior, yes. Yeah, no, so yeah, you, you might, you might so yeah, you might have a higher order terms, you have the coupling through that. But the coupling already appears because the Q uh, uh, or the parameter tensor appears in both. So that's where the, that what produces the coupling. But is this, uh, could it be done in an easier way? Like, I mean, is this the least you need to do? To be able to the, the least you need to capture, so most of the models are, that are being worked with is it, uh, they are a kind of neo hookian type. So it's just a, a neo hookian combined with, uh, that, that takes into consideration the behavior of the pneumatic director. So it's the so-called neoclassical model. Yeah. So you don't have the liquid crystal component in that model. But what was observed, this, uh, this is this has become less and less, uh, people are becoming less and less confident in using just the neoclassical form based on strictly the neohookian because anisot the, the, some kind of anisotropy has been observed so if you measure the elastic responses in one perpendicular and parallel to the pneumatic director the the elastic modulus does not come out the same even if the pneumatic director rotates which it does so in, in liquid crystal elastomer that's the, it's not like in fiber material that remains fixed in liquid crystal elastomers, it rotates. So the director, as you saw, it rotates with the force. It, but it does not rotate immediately. It does, so for a while, it, it does have this kind of anisotropy. And this is not well captured by the neoclassical, neo hookian type sort of model. So then if you add the extra component with the liquid crystal component, then that's captured. So we, we have actually in the paper with this molecular dynamic simulation, that's why what we show. So it's, it's captured very well, actually. And it's it's captured in an interesting in the in the, in the interesting manner. So, measuring the different elastic moduli in different directions do does give you different results. So, it's it's uh, yeah it, the two components together give a better a more accurate representation of the material than without the pneumatic component. If at, at little at small strain at large strain, you know, classical is not capable of capturing. So you need more Ogden type. At least that's what we we covered. Any other questions? If not, then let's hang on. Thank you. Again. Thanks. Say it to the microphone so that people at Zoom can hear it. So, uh, Katarina has some handbooks on how to uh, organize a study group of industry. So, when we go to the common room, I'll have them if you want uh, to have a look at them. Let me know, and people on Zoom can email me about this as well. And uh, next week we meet online for a talk by Lance Davidson from Pittsburgh, and this will be the final talk uh, this semester. So thank you for coming today and see you all online next week. Thank you. Uh, um, uh, Maciek, can I say something about the booklets? Um, can you hear me?